We're releasing version 1.0 of the Letta SDK. Letta's SDK interfaces with the Letta API to create perpetual agents that learn and evolve over time. Letta's API can add learning and statefulness on top of any model provider, including OpenAI, Anthropic, Google Gemini, OpenRouter, and more. The SDK provides abstractions for accessing and managing agent state and context, so developers and agents alike can granularly control and engineer an agent's context through the API, and also port state across model providers. First, let's try creating a basic agent in Letta. So I've already set my Letta API key. I can actually grab that from in here inside of the Letta um, developer platform. So now I can create the agent. So let's just do client.agents create and then I can basically so this is the model handle this is basically just referring which um, model I want to use and then I can also set model settings so these are basically provider specific settings um, which are going to depend on the provider uh, in this case we're going to use OpenAI um, and then um, so yeah provider type OpenAI and then set the reasoning effort to be low so there's also other things like the max output tokens or the temperature um, things that you can configure depending on the provider once you have an agent, you can access it through its unique ID. You can dynamically attach resources, both when you create the agent or after the fact. For example, attaching tools or memory blocks. So we have this agent ID from the agent that we just created before, so let's try messaging it. So to do this, I can get back a response by basically sending a message, so creating a message for the agent. Um, and so let's pass in the agent ID and then message it something like, It's not capital France. Uh, what's your name? Uh, the agent is not going to have a name, so I don't think this will give a very interesting response, but we can start this off. And then this response object is basically going to come back with both um, the usage and then also the messages. So we can print out the usage and then we can also print out each of the messages. And then these messages will actually have different types. So let's actually print them out depending on the type. And this autocomplete already knows exactly what I'm trying to do. I don't think we'll actually get any of these. Um, so let's also just add an oops else. So these are basically different types that we have um, that are structured slightly differently. So let's run this again. And so you can see that um, this agent basically responded back to us. I guess it's just calling itself ChatGPT for now. Um, and so, yeah, that's basically how we get returned back the agent. So let's create an agent that's a little more interesting and actually has um, resources attached to it. So let's create this agent. Um, name it block agent. Let's use maybe GPT-5 this time. Um, let's do high reasoning effort. And then I'm going to basically create, um, a persona memory block. So this is basically, uh, you can customize this depending on your agent, but this is basically going to be representing the memory that the agent has about itself. So we'll, yeah, this just kind of auto completed to your name is Sam. Let's keep that. So it represents information about the assistant. Um, and then I'm also going to create an, another memory block that's kind of free floating, um, or exists on its own. So I can directly create a memory block. So let's do create a human block. Let's label human. Um, and let's just have it not really know anything for now. Um, and then this block can actually be attached to this existing agent, or I can even attach it to multiple agents. So I can basically attach this. And then now print out this agent ID. And then I had this code before for basically um, messaging this agent. So let's do agent ID. So once again, we're going to message the agent and ask it, what's your name? So I created the agent. And then now it responds back saying, my name is Sam, because it has that persona block. We can also go look at this agent in the ADE and see that it has multiple blocks attached to it now. And we can also see the message that we just sent to this agent. 
all of an agent's state is fully transparent, including its execution history. You can list out an agent's runs, its run history, and steps through the API to see metrics like usage statistics and runtime. So for this run, we can basically uh, grab the run ID from the message. So each, each of these messages coming back from the response is going to have that run ID that basically represents like each time you invoke the agent, um, what, what kind of happened in that run. So we can retrieve that run. Um, and then for this run, let's just print that out. And then we can also get the steps from this run. Um, so we can do for step in clients.runs.step.list, basically print out each of these steps. So let's maybe print out a line here. And then let's this time let's say my name is Sarah. Oh, let's not recreate the agent again and use the same one. So we can see that we printed out the run for the agent. So this has a lot of information, like, you know, when was it completed? When was it created? Um, what were the included message types and other metadata? And then you can also see each of the steps. So this is basically one LLM invocation per step um, that also has information like the model, the endpoint used, um, usage statistics, et cetera. Um, and I can actually also see all this information in the ADE as well, because these are all using the same APIs under the hood. So switching back into the ADE, I can see that, you know, now that I said my name is Sarah, um, it called the memory replace tool and then uh, had a message. And then I can, of course, see all the details of each of these tool calls, which are, of course, also accessible in the API. The most important part of building agents is context engineering. The way that the context is managed over time is what determines your agent's behavior and how it learns over time. Leto's API allows for granular management of the context window through memory blocks, which each represent segments of the context window. The API also provides a notion of the virtual file system to the agent so that the agent can interact with large amounts of context without reading everything into its working context. So I'm going to create a folder. Um, and this is going to basically contain Apple annual reports. I already did this before, so it's auto-completing. Um, and then, yeah, basically it contains annual reports for Apple. So I've created this folder. Let's also print out the folder ID. And then once I've created this folder, I can also upload files into it. So I already have a folder that, or a folder locally that has a couple of PDFs inside of it. So I can basically do for files um, in this directory, basically upload this file um, into the, the folder inside of Letta. And then once that's finished uploading, I can then attach this folder to my agent. So I can do client.agents.folders.attach. So this is basically attaching the folder to the agent. So let's run this again. So it's uploading these files, and then now it's attached the folder to the agent. So again, if I now go back to the ADE, I can see that these files got, are getting uploaded to the agent, and now this agent can actually access these um, and answer questions about the files that have been uploaded. Letta agents also support custom tools and integrations with MCP. Tools can be called and executed in parallel to improve runtime performance. You can also add human in the loop to agents through tool approvals. So let's try adding a custom tool into Letta. So I'm just going to copy in a simple tool that I've already defined. Um, let me import this Pydantic model. So basically, this is just a nested schema where we're creating a list of steps. Um, so this steps list represents the arguments of the tool where each um, step is like a step object itself. And then the tool is this create task plan tool. So basically um, its arguments are defined by the steps list object. And to create this tool, I can basically do um, upsert from function where I pass in the function itself as well as the arg schema. And so this will create the tool inside of Letta. And you know we can do custom code like print 
hello. So let's create this tool. And so now this tool has been created and has its own unique ID. So now I can create an agent that uses this tool. So basically do agent is client.agents.create. Um, again, let's just use GPT-5. And then I can basically pass in tool IDs is this tool ID. And so this will attach this tool in addition to the base tools that get attached. If I don't want any additional tools to be added, I can also do um, include base tools equals false, and this will skip adding the default tools. So now I've updated my tool and then also created this agent. I can also have this create task plan tool require approval by default. So the way I can do that is I can pass in default requires approval is true. So that means that this agent cannot actually run this tool without getting an approval um, response from the client. You can also configure this per agent. So you can basically make it that specific tools require approval for specific agents. In this case, I'm making it so that this tool will globally by default require approval. So if I hop back to the AD, I can see that this tool has been attached and it's only this tool. And then from this icon, you can see that this tool requires human approval before running. I can also connect MCP servers into Letta through the SDK. So let's create like a EXA MCP server. And so to do this, I'm basically specifying a new unique server name. This can basically be whatever you want it to be as long as it's unique. And then I also pass in a config. Um, so I don't actually need these. Um, but this is basically specifying the MCP server type as well as the server URL. So once I created the server, I can either attach the tools to an existing agent or into um, a new agent. So let's just create another agent now. So basically I can pass in um, all the tool IDs um, from the server, but let's actually also just attach them manually. Uh, so I can list out these tools and then I can attach each of these tools individually. Um, so basically taking that agent ID and taking that tool ID, and then let's print out the agent. Okay, great. And so now if I go to this agent, I can see that basically it's attached these tools from the EXA MCP server, and we can see that in the ADE. Some agents run for many minutes, and as models improve, will likely start to run for hours or even days. Letta's API provides an asynchronous messaging endpoint for long-running agents, as well as options to enable background mode when streaming back execution data. So let's message this agent with the create async endpoint. So this endpoint will actually return a run um, because it's it, it uh, runs asynchronously. Um, and so let's just message it something. Uh, it doesn't really matter what it is. Let's just ask it, sure, what's the capital of France? Um, and then basically, once we get this run back, we want to wait for it to have the status completed. So we can basically return, retrieve this run multiple times. Um, let's import time. And we can do... Just wait for a bit. And then once uh, this run becomes completed, then we can actually list out the messages from the run. Um, so let's do print message. And this is the same run object um, that is associated with actually every single execution in Letta. So you can list out the usage, the messages, etc. all the same things for the runs that we did before. And so you can see that the run is still created. So we're basically waiting for it to finish and then it eventually finishes and then we return back the messages. So this type of pattern can be really useful if you need your agents to durably execute because this actually runs with a durable execution under the hood. Um, so you can have agents that are extremely long running um, but not have to worry about them accidentally terminating or unexpectedly dying. If you also wanna stream back the responses, you can uh, do something very similar with streaming mode where you essentially enable a background stream the easiest way to use the Letta API is through our Python and TypeScript SDKs, but you can also, of course, use the API directly. We'll be releasing more detailed tutorials soon, so subscribe to our channel or join our Discord to stay up to date.